Welcome to Compliance Training for Tyler Junior College. Today's topic, FERPA, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, is a federal law which applies to educational institutions and agencies, such as schools, school districts, colleges, and universities, to which funds have been available under any program administered by the Secretary of Education. The purpose of FERPA is to protect the privacy of parents and students with regard to education records under Section 444 of the General Education Provisions Act as amended. Wow, it's easy to get confused with all that legal language. Let's try that again in plain English. The truth is, data about us is everywhere. It's collected when we shop, take a vacation, look at a web page or send an email. You see, FERPA is a federal law that applies to most schools, colleges, and universities. It's meant to protect all that identifiable information about students in records that are kept by schools, and it provides the right for you to access that information, to seek to correct it, and generally to consent to its disclosure. Let's take a closer look at what that means. Today is Patrick's first day of kindergarten. As Patrick moves through the education system, his schools accumulate data, such as his grades, learning disabilities, or special needs information, and <clears throat> disciplinary information. As Patrick takes tests to see how he's progressing, his scores are protected by FERPA. FERPA requires schools and state and local educational agencies to keep the information that came from Patrick's records private and get his parents' written consent before sharing it with anyone else. There are some exceptions, but the general rule is Patrick's records are confidential. Students don't attend school anonymously, so schools routinely share some basic information about students, called directory information. If a school is going to share directory information, it must notify parents and students who are 18 or over or who attend post-secondary institutions. For example, Patrick's school yearbook contains his name, grade level, and photograph. That's okay because his school designated these items as directory information and published its policy on its website, and Patrick's parents haven't opted out. FERPA also requires schools provide Patrick's parents the ability to review his records to make sure they are accurate. Patrick's applying to college. He and his parents review his high school transcript and discover the school has gotten Patrick confused with another student who has lower grades. This isn't good. FERPA not only gives his parents the right to see the records, but also to request that the school correct mistakes. If Patrick's parents and the school disagree on the accuracy of the info, FERPA gives Patrick's parents the right to request a hearing. Colleges and universities are also required to protect student information under FERPA, but the rules change a bit. Meet Lisa, a high school graduate who is headed off to college. Hooray! While Lisa was in elementary, middle, and high school, and under the age of 18, FERPA allowed her parents access to her education records. Now, Lisa is entering college, and her FERPA rights transfer from her parents to her. Her parents wonder, but wait a minute, I'm paying the bills here, and now I can't see how she's doing academically? Since Lisa's parents claim her as a dependent on their federal tax return, her parents can still see her education records if Lisa's college chooses to release them. FERPA doesn't require schools to release records, it only allows this. You may be wondering, how do I find out more about how FERPA affects me or my child? To start, look for your school or school district's FERPA policy on its website, or ask your principal or school administrative staff about your rights under FERPA. Visit the Department of Education's Family Policy Compliance Office website for answers to frequently asked questions on privacy, training and guidance for parents and students on FERPA rights and protections. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, is a federal law that protects the privacy of student education records. The law applies to all schools that receive funds under an applicable program 
of the U.S. Department of Education. FERPA applies to higher education as well as secondary and primary educational institutions. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, commonly referenced as FERPA, is a federal law that protects the privacy of student education records, which applies to all schools receiving funds under an applicable program of the U.S. Department of Education. Faculty, staff, administrators, and other university officials are required by FERPA to treat education records in a legal, specified manner. Education records are all records that contain information directly related to a student and are maintained by an education agency or institution. An education record may include all academic records, admission, academic, financial, disciplinary records, photographs, publications, ID photos, class roster photos, written documents, transcripts, application materials, test data, notes and memos, computer and electronic data, database information, backup data, video and audio records, academic and classroom activities, distance learning data, and security tapes. Educational records also include records that contain any personally identifiable information, which is any data or information that relates to a record of an individual. Personally identifiable information includes, but is not limited to, the student's name, the name of the student's parent or family members, the student's address, a personal identifier such as the student's social security number or student ID number, a list of personal characteristics that would make the student's identity easily traceable, other information that would make the student's identity easily traceable. Education records do not include medical or psychological treatment records, employment records provided that employment is not contingent upon being a student, records of the university's Office of Public Safety, and sole possession notes. Sole possession notes are those notes made by one person as an individual observation or recollection. They are kept in the possession of the maker. Remember these key points about sole possession notes. Notes taken in conjunction with any other person are not sole possession notes. Counselor's notes, interview notes. Sharing these notes with another person or placing them in an area where they can be viewed by others makes them education records and subject FERPA. Best advice, if you don't want it reviewed, don't write it down. A student is covered under FERPA once that student has been in attendance as determined by the institution. Attendance includes, but is not limited, to attendance in person or by paper correspondence, video conference, internet, or other telecommunications technology when a student is not physically present in the classroom and during a period of time when the student is under a work-study program. FERPA gives parents certain rights with respect to their children's education records. These rights transfer to the student when he or she reaches the age of 18 or attends a school beyond the high school level. Students to whom the rights have transferred are called eligible students. Applicants who are denied admission or who never attended are not covered under FERPA. FERPA rights continue even after a student leaves the institution. However, their postgraduate activities as an alumni are not protected. FERPA rights are terminated only by written request of the student or by the death of the student. Because alumni can be defined as students, advancement professionals have to be cautious about which records do and do not fall under FERPA rules. Here is a general idea of what to keep in mind. FERPA does not apply to records that relate information about the, the alum's life after graduation. FERPA does apply to records that relate to the alum's life while he or she was a student, even if the record is being accessed after the alum is no longer a student. FERPA rights apply to students. A student is a person who is or has been in attendance at the institution regardless of the person's age. Under FERPA, a student has a right to inspect, review, or request to amend educational records. 
have control over the disclosure of information regarding their records. The university notifies students annually of their FERPA rights. If a student requests to review their record, the institution must provide this information within 45 days from the request. School officials within the institution may obtain information from education records without prior written consent, or a person employed by or under contract to the university to perform a special task such as an attorney or auditor. This individual must also have a legitimate educational interest. Students are protected under FERPA when they are currently or previously enrolled in any academic offering of the university. This does not include prospective students or applicants to any academic program of the university. Applicants who are denied admission or have never attended are not covered under FERPA. Schools may disclose without consent directory information. However, schools must tell eligible students about directory information and allow them a reasonable amount of time to request that the school not disclose directory information about them. Schools must notify eligible students annually of their rights under FERPA. The actual means of notification, special letter, inclusion on the school's website, or a student handbook is left to the discretion of each school. At Tyler Junior College, directory information includes name and address, major field of study at TJC, dates of attendance, most recent previous educational institution attended, classification, degrees, certifications and awards received, date of graduation, email address, photographs, participation in officially recognized activities in sports, weight and height of members of athletic teams, and enrollment status, whether undergraduate or graduate, full-time or part-time. The following can never be included as directory information, a social security number, student identification number, citizenship, gender, ethnicity, religious preference, grades, GPA, and daily class schedule. Remember, never disclose this information without the consent of the student. FERPA allows schools to disclose without consent to the following parties under the following conditions. School officials with legitimate educational interest, other schools to which a student is transferring, specific officials for audit or evaluation purposes, appropriate parties in connection with financial aid to a student, organizations conducting certain studies for or on behalf of the school, accrediting organizations to comply with a judicial order or lawfully issued subpoena, appropriate officials in cases of health and safety emergencies, and state and local authorities within a juvenile justice system pursuant to specific state law. Students may have all directory information withheld by notifying the registrar in writing by the census date of each semester. Requests for non-disclosure will be honored by the institution until the student notifies the registrar in writing that directory information may be released. Questions regarding FERPA or the withholding of directory information should be directed to the registrar's office. Directory information, which is information that is generally not considered harmful or an invasion of privacy if released, can also be disclosed to outside organizations without the student's permission. Non-directory information may include, but is not limited, to social security number, student ID number, race, ethnicity, nationality, gender, grades, and specific class location. Remember, this information cannot be released without written consent from the student. An institution is not obligated to release directory information to anyone. FERPA states only that an institution may release information, but there is no obligation to do so. When in doubt about whether something is directory information, do not release any information. When a student reaches the age of 18 or begins attending a post-secondary institution, regardless of age, FERPA rights transfer from the parent to the student. 
In order for parents to obtain non-directory information, the student must sign a release of information form. These waivers are maintained by the registrar and all parents or guardians should be referred to the registrar's office prior to providing any non-directory information. FERPA allows institutions to release information without consent in connection with an articulable and significant threat to the health or safety of a student or other individuals. If a student needs to be located for emergency reasons, please contact Campus Safety. A spouse of a student has no rights under FERPA to access the student's education record without written consent from the student. Prevention is the key. Do not leave a computer on or unattended where personally identifiable information may be accessed. Do not discuss confidential student information with anyone including the student in the presence of or where others may overhear. Do not provide information deemed confidential through general email. If a grade or similar information must be transmitted to the student electronically, it must be done using the student's TJC email address. Properly shred student information that is no longer in use. Often faculty and staff are asked to write recommendations for students. Remember, it is a violation of FERPA to disclose any information deemed confidential in a letter of recommendation unless a written authorization is provided by the student. You may, however, comment on behaviors and characteristics you have personally observed while working with or supervising the student. Personal observations are not a violation of FERPA. Remember, a student who believes his or her FERPA rights have been violated may file a claim with the Department of Education. Violations of FERPA regulations by an institution may result in a withholding of federal financial aid and or may result in a lawsuit. Violations of FERPA are costly and should never take place. Do you utilize peer feedback in your teaching? Did you know peer review does not violate FERPA privacy protections? The Supreme Court has also determined that classroom peer grading does not constitute an education record and does not violate FERPA, at least not until after the grades are recorded in a teacher's gradebook. It is important to communicate feedback to students directly via email, the phone, or in person. Avoid public online spaces where comments are available to anyone such as blogs or wikis. Avoid using personally identifiable information in your comments. For example, when an instructor leaves evaluative feedback for the student in a comment section of the post, he or she violates FERPA by making his or her evaluation public. Avoid the grade posting danger zones. Make sure to never leave graded tests in a stack for students to pick up by sorting through the papers of all students. You may leave them with an assistant and or a receptionist to give out to the students and you may place each test in a sealed envelope with the student's name on it. Never require students to use a social security number, student ID number, birthday, phone numbers, auto tag numbers, or derivatives of those numbers. Never link the name of the student with the student's ID number in any public manner. Never post the grades, even if coded, in alphabetical order or any other recognizable order. Never, as a matter of good practice, provide a grade to a student over the telephone or email without first verifying the identity of the student. You have now completed FERPA training. To receive credit, you must complete the quiz with a score of 70% or higher. If you have other questions about FERPA or need more information, contact Tom Elder, Registrar, at TELD at TJC.edu. Thank you. Mm -hmm.